Our first scripture reading is John chapter 8, verses 12 to 20. John chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I came from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true, because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to his most holy word. Please turn in your Bibles to John chapter 9. John chapter 9, and I'll read verses 1 to 12. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. There was a new voice, a voice like nothing the people had ever heard of before, a voice crying out in the wilderness. And the speaker was unique. He was distinguished by his strange wardrobe, by his odd diet. He ate insects and wild honey. And though he seemed odd, he was also magnetic. People were drawn to the Jordan to hear him speak. He called on the crowds to turn from their wickedness and to repent. And many responded. Many came forward and were baptized. He said that he had been sent by God to prepare the way because the Messiah was coming. He declared, John records, that he himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. He testified that the true light was coming. The light of the world would soon be revealed. The ministry of John the Baptist was to point people to Jesus Christ, the one who he called the light. The I am statement of Jesus that we are going to meditate on this morning is I am the light of the world. The Apostle John records Jesus making this statement twice. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the light, and he invites people to walk in his light. We are not to walk in the darkness, tripping and stumbling along, falling over roots and rocks, falling into sin and temptation, but we are to walk in the light for the eternal good of our souls, and for the glory of God. Then in the next chapter, in John chapter 9, verse 5, Jesus says, While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. While Jesus is present, while he is among them, they are to know that he is the light, 
He shines in the world, revealing the truth. As with the rest of the I Am statements, this is a powerful declaration. Jesus is consciously and intentionally making these grand statements concerning himself and his mission, statements that could only be made by one who is the Son of God. And this is what Jesus does. He says, I am the light of the world. And he says this on at least two occasions. So let us consider this morning the second of the seven I am statements recorded in the Gospel of John. I am the light of the world. And we will begin with the point that Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. He declares himself to be light, to be the light of the world. Well, what does he intend to communicate to the people by describing himself in this way? What is it about light that makes it a relevant metaphor for Jesus to use when seeking to describe who he is? Well, what does light do? Light shines in the darkness. Light reveals. It reveals that which is true and real. With our boys, we've been going through a devotional book, and there's a number of of stories in this book from the life of Charles Spurgeon, the Baptist preacher from the 1800s. And in the sto- one of the stories we read this week, um, Spurgeon, when he was a young man, had been preaching on a Sunday evening and was walking home in the dark. And he looked ahead and he saw what appeared to be a monster or a ghost. And he was frightened and he didn't know what it was. And so he eventually built up the courage, approached the ditch, jumped over the ditch, and just grabbed a hold of whatever the monster was. And he found that it was a tree. And it was a tree that someone with a sense of humor had painted. And so in the dark, it looked scary. It looked like it could be a monster. But in the light of day, the light reveals that it was truly a painted tree. And that's what light does. It reveals. And the scriptures teach us that The world was in darkness. The people were walking in darkness, in ignorance. But now the light has come. Jesus has come to reveal the truth. Light enables us to see clearly. Jesus has come to reveal God's truth to the people. He comes to bring knowledge and insight. Now what is the truth that Jesus, the light of the world, reveals? He reveals the truth about God, about sin, and about the gospel. Let us consider the two times that Jesus declared himself to be the light of the world in context. Why did he identify himself as light at those specific times? Well, let us first turn to John 8, 12. What's going on in this passage? What is the context of this verse? And what immediately precedes this comment is debated. Many of your Bibles will have a note about the first 11 verses of John chapter 8. The historical accuracy of John 8, 1 through 11 is not debated. The story of the woman caught in adultery, it's not questioned. It is an actual event that happened. But why a lot of Bibles have notes, and my Bible has it in italics, is because the exact placement of the story is questioned. Whether it, uh, whether John initially had it where he did, where it is in our Bibles it's in John 8, or whether it was uh, at another place in the in the scriptures, in his gospel. So then the immediate context of Jesus' declaration that he is the light of the world could be the account of the woman caught in adultery or the account that occurs at the end of chapter 7. However, both of them are helpful to instruct us about what Jesus, the light of the world, the one who has been sent by the Father, has come to reveal. Jesus reveals the truth about God. If we go back to chapter 7, we see that people are having debates over who Jesus is. And then this debate continues into chapter 8, which I read earlier. And as I look into chapter 8 in my Bible, the section titles are Dispute Over Jesus' Testimony, Dispute Over Who Jesus Is, and Dispute Over Whose Children Jesus' Opponents Are. are. There's much that Jesus and his opponents were disputing. And at the core of it is, Who is Jesus? What right does he have to make the claims that he does? How can he testify of the things that he testifies of? And by implication, if Jesus is the Son of God, then who are they? Who are the people, the crowds, 
whom he is disputing with. Well, who is Jesus? And as we have seen, this is a question that John puts front and center in this gospel. The conclusion that John wants his readers to come to is that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the one in whom is eternal life. And the Pharisees and religious leaders, they reject this conclusion. They believe that Jesus is not legitimate, that he's not from God, but he is a deceived ally of the devil. They do not believe his testimony. They do not accept that Jesus is who he claimed to be. And who did Jesus claim to be? Well, he said that he's the Son of God, the one who has come to reveal the Father. John chapter 1, verse 18, John writes, No one has seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Jesus has come to make the Father known, to show them and us in a very real and personal way who God is. And then later in the upper room, as recorded in John chapter 14, when Philip asked Jesus to show them the Father, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. What a statement. Anyone who has seen Jesus has seen the Father. By listening to Jesus, by watching Him, by spending time with Him, the disciples and the people have learned about the Father, about the Holy and Almighty God. You want to know who God is? You want to know who the Creator is? Jesus says, look at me. I teach you by my words, by my actions, by my life. I reveal the Father to you. That is what Jesus, the light of the world, does. He reveals God in all of his glorious attributes. In Jesus, we see the love of God, the power of God, the knowledge of God, the grace of God, and so on. Light enables us to see clearly. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And he enables us to see clearly God. Look to Jesus, for he is the I Am. The author to the Hebrews says that he is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. The exact representation of his being. Light reveals, light makes the truth known, and Jesus has come to show the Father. Jesus reveals the truth about God. And then Jesus also reveals the truth about sin. Whether the story of the woman caught in adultery initially was put at this point in the Gospel by John himself, or whether it was moved from another place at a later point, it fits in well with Jesus' declaration to be the light of the world. Light reveals things that are hidden, like sin. We want to keep our sin from the eyes of others, because our sin is a source of shame and regret and embarrassment. However, light reveals the sinfulness of our actions and our hearts. The self-righteous Pharisees thought that they were being so godly and so upright by bringing the sin of this woman to light. She has sinned and they want to make it known to everybody. They proudly looked down upon her and they judged her and condemned her as a sinner. And the condemnation that she deserved gave them an opportunity, so they thought, to trap and discredit Jesus. They wanted to know what Jesus says that they should do with this woman who is caught in immorality. Should they stone her as the law commands? Well, how will Jesus answer them? And if Jesus said that they should stone her, then he is violating the Roman law, which had taken away the legal authority of the Jews to perform capital punishment. But on the flip side, if Jesus said, do not stone her, then he would be contradicting the law of Moses. As his opponents saw it, Jesus had two choices. He could either advocate breaking the Roman law or the Jewish law. But Jesus is not one to fall into the traps of his opponents. What the light of the world did was reveal the truth of the sin, not only the sin of the woman, but of her accusers. He simply said that whichever one of them was without sin should throw the first stone. 
Jesus' words search their hearts. In the silence, the hearts of the accusers, their motives, their actions, their conduct, their lives, were examined. And they could not deny the truth. They knew that they were sinners. They had all transgressed against the law. They had all sinned against God. Iniquity was in their hearts and their lives. They were eager to bring the sin of this woman to light. But they were not prepared for the light of the world to search their own hearts. And when they were searched, they were exposed as the sinners that they are. And this is what Jesus does. Jesus is the light of the world. And when this light shines, it exposes us for the sinners that we are. It illuminates our sinful hearts, actions, attitudes, and words, just as he did with the woman's accusers. Light enables us to see clearly. And the light of the world causes us to see our sin. Have you felt the searching power of the light of the world? Do you read the scriptures examining yourself so that you might put to death that which is sinful and live in obedience and faithfulness to the Lord? The light of the world exposes sin and in doing so, it reveals our desperate need for a savior. And that brings us to chapter nine and the second time that Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Jesus reveals the truth about the gospel. Jesus and his disciples saw a man who had been born blind. And this gave the disciples an opportunity to talk to Jesus about the presence of evil in the world. Where does suffering come from? Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he had been born blind? In the disciples' reasoning, the disability of this man, well, it must be the result of somebody's sin. And so who is the sinner? Was it this man or was it his parents? But Jesus says that their theology is wrong. This man's blindness was not the direct result of someone's sin, his or his parents. It has occurred so that the works of God might be displayed in him. The purpose of his blindness is to reveal the power of God. What Jesus was going to do was show that the, as the light of the world, he has come to give sight to those who are blind. He has come to bring light to those who are in darkness. And this is what he did for the blind man. Jesus worked a miracle. He made some mud, anointed the eyes of the man, and told him to go and wash. And when he did that, the man was able to see. But not only was the man's physical eyes opened, but so were his spiritual eyes. After he was healed, the man believed and became a follower of Jesus. Jesus came to give sight to the blind, to give light to those in darkness. He did this not only by declaring the gospel to them, but by being the savior for sin that we need. Light enables us to see clearly. And Jesus, as the light of the world, not only declares the gospel, but he says, I am the one that you need to come to. I am the one who gives life. I am the one who is the way to the Father. Jesus died on the cross so that all those who believe in him might have eternal life, might be reconciled to God. So Jesus is the light. And what does it mean that Jesus is the light? It means that he reveals. He reveals the truth. He makes that which is hidden seen. He reveals the truth about God the truth about sin, and also the truth about the gospel. And Jesus reveals not only how to get to heaven, but that he is the way to heaven. He is the one who brings light and life. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light of the world. Our second point. So we've thought about this metaphor of light and what does it communicate. But Jesus says not only that he is the light, but that he is the light of the world. Who does he reveal the truth to? Well, he is the light for everyone, for the world. He is the light that has come into the world to all people. 
his coming is good news of great joy which shall be for all people there is a universal need to know God and to know the truth of the gospel so that everyone might hear if you go back to the first chapter of this gospel you will read in verse 4 in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind it is all mankind all people that need the life offered by Jesus and then in verse 9 of chapter 1 the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world Jesus is the true light there are false lights there are false gospels but Jesus is the true light the one who is the way to the Father and the true light that gives light he reveals this truth to everyone all people can and are to learn of God's truth through Jesus Christ whether Jew or Gentile young or old rich or poor the light is for all people the invitation to come to Jesus goes out to all Jesus says in John 12 46 I have come into the world as light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness well what about you do you realize that Jesus is the light that he is the only light and if so do you walk in the light do you tell other people about the light Jesus is the light of the world, the light that everyone in the world needs. And this is why we are called to proclaim the truth to others. God's truth is for all people. And so we are to let them know what the light reveals about the Father, about sin, and about salvation. Our third and final point is responding to the light. Jesus declares himself to be the light of the world and invites all people to walk in the light and not in darkness. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Well, how do people respond to that which the light has revealed? And some follow the light, like the blind man, but some do not, like the Pharisees. In fact, the scripture tells us that in general, the light is rejected. For the most part, people do not walk according to the light. I just read John 1, 9, and here are the next verses. This is John 1, 9 through 11. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. What a tragedy. The Creator came. The light of the world came to his own people, to those who were anticipating the Messiah. But they did not receive him. They did not embrace the light. Well, why not? Because by nature, we are blind. We are born blind, and as a result, we are walking in darkness. And when confronted by the light, we prefer to remain in darkness, in moral darkness, and in ignorance of the truth of God. John 3.19, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. This is a sad assessment of humanity. At the end of the day, people love their sins. They want to cling to the facade of self-sovereignty and will not submit themselves to the Lord. They think that they are running their own lives and they don't want anybody to tell them what to do and they don't realize that they are truly walking in darkness. People have gone astray. They would rather go their own way and persist in the darkness than come to the light. And this should move us. This should move us to tears. This should move us to pray. May the Lord have mercy on our loved ones, on our community, on our generation. Though most do not follow the light, we are told that there are some who turn to the light, who desire to walk in the light. There are some who receive him and believe in his name. Jesus says, believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. And so this is what we are to do. We are to believe in the light. Believe that Jesus came from heaven to reveal the truth. The truth about God, the truth about the gospel. And this truth is that Jesus is the Messiah and Savior. He is the Son of God in whom there is eternal life. And those who believe are called children of light. Children of truth. Children of God.
This is a glorious blessing and a wonderful hope. To the children of light are given the promises of God, the promise of eternal life, and because we have been reconciled to God, the promise of forgiveness and peace with our Creator. If we are children of the light, then we are to walk in the light. We are not to walk in darkness, in the patterns of sin that we used to walk, or according to the behavior and conduct of the world, but in the light. In his first letter, John writes, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. So do you walk in the light? Well, what does walking in the light mean? What does it look like? Well, it's a call to obedience. As children of the light, we are to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, who is the light. Light reveals the safe path, the way to go. You can think of walking in the woods at dark and how important it is to have a flashlight because if you don't have a flashlight, you're going to be tripping and stumbling and falling here and there. But if you have a flashlight, you can see the way that you're to go. You can plant your feet firmly and carefully and safely. Light reveals the safe path. And Jesus is the light of the world. And so we are to follow in his footsteps. We are to pattern our lives after him. He teaches us what we should do, what we should not do what we should refrain from, what we should participate in. And we know that His way is the best way. He loves us. He cares for us. He cares that we are safe, that we are healthy. He cares about our eternal soul. He wants us to grow and to thrive and to excel. And we can trust Him. And so we are to pattern our lives after Him. And that means we are to strive to be pure as He is pure, which involves putting sin to death and striving to live a life of righteousness. Jesus says that his followers are to be light in this world. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Because of our relationship with Jesus Christ, the light of the world, we are to let our light shine. We are to reflect the glory, the brightness of Christ in this world so that people might see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. Living in the light means that we will let our light shine. It's a call to general obedience. But also an important and specific way that we let our lights shine is by loving one another. 1 John 2, 9 and 10, the Apostle writes, Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing that can make them stumble. And so when John is thinking about what does living in the light look like, very practically, he says it means loving your brother and sister. It means caring for them, showing kindness to them, being compassionate, caring. If we are children of light, if we are followers of Jesus, then we will make it our priority to love one another. And the light of the world, Jesus, showed us the extent of love. He died for us. He died for our sins. He sacrificed greatly for us. And the Apostle tells us that, likewise, we are to love each other. And so let us be committed to walking in the light. Let us ask the Lord to examine our hearts with His light, so that we might more and more walk in obedience as children of the light. Jesus is the light of the world. He reveals the truth. The truth about God. The truth about sin and the truth about salvation. The light shines in the darkness, and Jesus calls us to come to the light, to walk in this world as light, for the glory of God, and for the praise of God the Father and God the Son. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is the light of the world. 
We thank you that you did not leave this world in darkness, in sin, in misery, in shame, in ignorance, but our Father, that you sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be light, to reveal the truth, to show us the way of salvation. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these things. And our Father, we pray that we would conform our lives to the light, that our desire would not to be to remain in darkness, but to walk in the light and to look forward to eternal life. Our Heavenly Father, we do pray for your blessing upon us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs> amen. Lord, well.